I've got some olive oil heating up in my Ninja Food if possible on the saute mode. And I'm just adding my sliced up potatoes using some red potatoes today. And I'm just giving them a little bit of a head start. Adding in some seasoned salt and some black pepper. Some garlic powder. Just gonna stir those potatoes around. And I'm gonna put the lid on. While I chop up an onion. Now I'm ready to toss in a whole large onion that I chopped up with my food chopper. Just didn't feel like crying today. And I'm just letting those potatoes and onions cook kind of like you would fried potatoes. Now I'm just getting busy cutting up some of this um, rope sausage. I always leave the ends for the dogs. So they are here at my feet just waiting patiently. A while back I received the wrong grocery order from Walmart and um, at that time they wouldn't take it back so I just decided to make what looked like they had in their basket and so it looked like potato soup to me and in their ingredients they had this um, veg garden vegetable cream cheese and so I went with it and it was really good so I grabbed some of those recently just to have on hand and in case I wanted to use it in a recipe while we're having potato soup today. So, I'm going to throw that right on in there. From see if we need it. Oh, you know much, you know, like, you know, I mean, I don't, I don't. Well, look in here and tell me if it looks like enough. We can definitely put more in if you want. Um. Yeah. Look good? Yeah. I just poured in two cups of half and half. Next I'm pouring in two more cups of 2% milk. Next I have two tablespoons of chicken bouillon. And I just mixed it in with some hot water and I'm just gonna add that right into our soup pot. Two more cups of water for a total of eight cups of cooking liquid. I have this turned down on the slow cook setting and I'm just going to thicken it up with some instant mashed potato flakes. I used about a half a cup is all. Alright, here's Bill's. He's got some Parmesan cheese on top with some crushed red pepper and some black pepper. And here's my bowl of soup. I have a little bit of broccoli that I added to the side, some saltines. I just peppered my soup really good and added a little bit of cheese. And that is dinner for Sunday.
Well, now that my bacon looks like it's all cooked up, I'm going to remove it so that I can saute some onions and get some chicken breast cooked up in this bacon grease. I'm just going to pour off some of that bacon grease. I don't need that much. Now that these chicken chunks are all um, cooked on each side, I'm just going to dust them with a little bit of flour. And then I'll just turn them around in this grease just so that they get that flour taste gets cooked out of them. And we start getting a little bit of a base for our sauce. And I'm just going to let that cook for a few more minutes. finished plates. I just made some Nor Alfredo noodles to go with it and a salad on the side. A couple of spices, some steak seasoning, garlic powder, black pepper, a little meat tenderizer, I already started and put a little meat tenderizer on there. Got ahead of myself. On this night, I had to work over, and Bill was so sweet to make dinner and actually recorded some of it for me. Um, always a simple and easy meal. Um, steak with a salad on the side. So nice to come home from a rough day at work and have dinner waiting for you. On this night, we took four of our grandkids out for dinner and a movie. They picked McDonald's for dinner and Wonka for the movie, which was lots of fun. We had a really great time. Well, winter is finally here. We are expecting about eight inches of snow. It is incredibly gray and gloomy, so I will be staying inside and probably doing some cooking. I'm just getting some olive oil heated up in my Ninja Foodi, and I'm going to have that on the saute setting. Then I'm just going to grate some carrots, and I do have baby carrots, and I know they're baby carrots, but if you know me, you know I don't like a crunchy carrot in my food, so I want them to be even smaller, 
<clears throat> so I'm going to grade them as well as I can without taking off my fingernails in the process. And by the way, if I didn't mention it, I am making some lentil soup. It's just a recipe that I have always used over the years. Um, originally based on Giada. Is that how you say your name? Giada? From the Food Network. So if you want to check out Giada's way of making lentil soup, uh, search for it and find her recipe. But if you're interested in how I make lentil soup, just keep watching. Um, <clears throat> so all I do is put my carrots in and I'm getting them started with some olive oil because I really like my carrots to be cooked and be nice and soft. But if you're doing it, you can do your carrots any way you like. If you like them to be chopped or sliced, whatever. And then next I'm just adding a whole bag of lentils that I have rinsed and cleaned up. That was an 18 ounce bag of lentils. Next I'm going to add about four cups of water. Um, so I just emptied out my measuring cup a little bit so that I could add a couple tablespoons of chicken bouillon to that water. Just gonna stir it up. Alright, doesn't look like my water was hot enough so my bouillon didn't dissolve all the way, but that's okay because that will happen eventually as the um, broth gets warmer. Next I'm going to toss in half of a diced up onion. Now some garlic powder. I'm using garlic powder because I'm out of minced and I'm out of fresh, so the powder it is. I may need more liquid depending on how much these lentils soak up. Of course, we'll add some salt and some pepper. Now I'm adding a can of diced tomatoes with green chilies. I don't think I've ever made lentil soup with um, green chilies, but I'm sure it's going to be wonderful. We like chilies. All right, let's let that cook for a minute or 30. Just for reference, earlier I added another four cups of water to this pot after reading the instructions on the lentils. Um, I didn't realize I needed more. I kind of figured I would because obviously they soak up that liquid. So next I just added a couple more cups because I'm going to add some macaroni noodles. I'm doing about a cup or a cup and a half. And then I'm just going to put the lid back on until those noodles are nice and cooked. And here is the finished lentil soup. I've already taken a spoon and given it a taste. It is delicious and perfect for a snowy, cold day like today. Now I just need to get my bowl and dish it up. Now that I have my soup bowl ready, I'm just going to take a little bit of olive oil and drizzle that right on top. And I highly recommend not skipping that part because there's so much flavor in that little bit of oil. And then I'm just going to top that with some grated Parmesan cheese. And now just mix that right in there. Oh, this is so good. Even my husband likes this soup, and he um, doesn't typically go for meals that don't have meat in them, but this is one that he really likes, too. Still 
still snowing. All right, so it's just been a snowy, snowy weekend. We're just gonna continue cooking food and staying and staying warm. <clears throat> I'm just cutting some sausage patties. It's the uh, zesty hot. We're having breakfast for dinner tonight. And I want some pancakes. So we're just gonna do some bacon and some sausage to go with those. For the pancake batter, I'm just using some Bisquick. I have my two eggs. I'm going to add my cup of milk. And I'm going to add some cinnamon. I'm not sure if I have vanilla and I just can't find it or if we're out. But normally I would put vanilla in our pancake batter as well. I'm just going to whisk that. Alright, I dropped a couple beads of batter down into my skillet just to make sure it was ready. And usually my first pancake is a flop. That one looks good and we... We have a big old plate of pancakes made up. Dinner is ready. I have some sausage and some bacon. A couple of nice sized pancakes here. I'm just going to add my syrup. I know it seems like I am super focused on the snow right now, but it is the middle of January and we're just now getting it. Here in Michigan, we're used to spending a whole season covered in snow. Well, we are pretty excited about it anyway, but with that being said, I hope it doesn't last long. <laughs> I am already in my mind moving ahead to spring and putting in the garden. I think that we all get like that around this time of the year. Grandkids are coming over. We have three little ones coming to stay the night. So I'm getting dinner started. I just want to have it um, mostly done and out of the way so that I'm not in the kitchen the whole time that they're here. As you can tell, I really like this. I've been using it so much since Christmas. And I am starting off with some ground beef that I am cooking up on the saute mode. This one is still a little bit frozen. It's not rock solid, but it's frozen. Although it was taken out last night. And we're going to just do a really quick and simple taco 
bow tie casserole type of meal. I'm just using what I have. I don't want to get out. Um, I have a lot of food. It's just, is it kid friendly? Not so sure about that. And um, so I figured taco flavored food is usually a hit. I'm just going to put my half an onion right in with the meat so that that can get started cooking as well. Okay, let's throw in some more stuff. I don't have any beef bouillon powder, but I have chicken, so I'm going to use that. And then I'm going to add what I estimate to be about two packets of taco seasoning. Now two cans of Rotel undrained. A 15 ounce can of tomato sauce. That is six cups of water. Stir it all up real good. Put the lid on and let it come back up to a boil. I'm just using a whole box of bow tie pasta. Now this looks so good, but it smells even better. So what I'm gonna do now, because I have the option with this Ninja Foodie of turning it down on slow cook, then that is what I'm gonna do. I just want to, um, you know, slow it down a little because we're not ready to eat yet, but I also wanted to soak up some liquid. I'm going to add some cheese and get it all thickened up. Turned down on warm, so it should stop bubbling soon. Um, and I just stirred in some cheese. Now, how much you add is completely up to you. I put quite a bit in here, um, and I just measured with my hand, so... A nice big heaping handful of cheese went into this and we may add more later I don't know but you could obviously make this with whatever you wanted whatever you like on your tacos um, some bell peppers um, some sour cream which I don't have any at the time so this is what it's gonna be it'll obviously thicken up some more too as it sits and I will show you the finished product when it gets closer to dinner time. I'm just going to let this sit on slow cooker mode on warm. And that's going to be the last meal for this week. As you can tell, the kids are here. I'm going to get them warmed up with some hot food. And we're probably gonna break out some board games and bake some cookies. Just wanna say thank you so much. You can hear them in the background. They're super excited. <laughs> um, but thank you for coming by and just watching another week of what we had for dinner here at our house. Oh, that looks so good. Yep, this one checks off a lot of boxes. It's delicious, taco flavored, so it's family friendly, all in one pot, so it's super easy too. All right, I'm going to let you go. We'll see you next week. Bye.